And I said to him, what, what are we bringing him in for? He's never going to play for us. Blah, blah, blah. One of the worst players I've ever seen. Cheap option again. And I'm telling you now, he could have won our player of the year. For the amount we paid, under £7 million, an absolute steal. And you know what? If, if a couple of pundits started putting him into their team of the season, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be against it. For me, he's the best striker in the world alongside Lewandowski. Oh. I, I don't, there's no, there's no debate there. You know what? Put me off of saying Jaden Sancho. They spoke about him for so long at, at Man United. I forgot he joined this year. <laughs> yeah. And Crow as well. He's 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 not played at all. I, I don't know what he's been doing there. To be quite honest with you, it's, just, it's like we give him a season ticket. There's a lot of fans now. If you again, if you asked a few Wolves fans, they probably wouldn't be against selling him in, in the summer, which is a shame, really. I think the biggest shining light, and it, it should be everyone's top of their list is Mike Dean is retiring at the end of this season and it's the last I ever want to see that geezer to be quite honest with you. <laughs> he can end up making the move from Villa to City again in a, in a few years like Grealish did or, or, or Liverpool. Um, he, he is going to be one of, the, one of the better footballers in this country. I think he's fantastic. Hello and welcome back to a special episode of Fan Zone, the Premier League football show where us fans talk everything Premier League. Um, I'm joined by a lovely couple of special guests today. Uh, Dave from Talking Walls, how are you, mate? Very well, thank you. Yeah, looking forward to it, lads. Looking forward to it. Uh, and Joe from Turfcast, how are you, Joe? Yeah, Hello, good, lads. mate. How are you? Oh, mate, we're not going to talk about that. No, um, I'm very well. <laughs> as, as I said, uh, my name's Nick. I'm from West Ham Fan TV. I'll be your host this evening. Right, boys, look, let's not waste any time. Um, it's the end of the season. We all like this time. We all like um, giving our special uh, football analysts and, 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 you know, pretending we know what we talk about. So let's talk <laughs> about the big one, first of all. Player of the season. Who is your player of the season? For me, I, I, know, I know the big debate is going to be KDB or Salah. Isn't it? Let's be fair. That's that's going to be the debate. For me, it's KDB. I just think he's head and shoulders above anybody else in the Premier League. Yes, Salah's good. I'm not saying he's not good. But I, th I think they've both been a bit hot and cold, though, really, as well. So I think that can come into the debate. KDB had a slow start, but he had a few injuries, to be fair, whereas Salah's probably been poor in the second half of the season, but he's been playing more games than what KDB in, in the first half. But for me, Kevin De Bruyne is just... He's, he is everything that Man City... He, every, he makes it tick for Man City. He is the most important part of their team and he is the linchpin. Salah, when he gets injured, I think Liverpool can cope without him. When City... When KDB gets injured, I think I think City struggle without him. So I'm going to nail my colour to the mask and go Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah, I mean, I, I was having the same argument with myself, Salah or Kevin De Bruyne, and I think I've, I've lent the same way as you, Joe, to be honest. You look at his numbers... I think Salah obviously has got the most goal contributions in the league by a fair stretch, but I think you're right with KDB. Obviously, he's had little spells where he's not been in the team due to injury or whatever, but I think he's uh, he's got 22 goal contributions in 29 games this season. Um, and if I was undecided, last week when he came to Molyneux, it was one of the most ridiculous uh, individual performances I'd, I'd ever seen. Uh, four goals against us in the first half, just completely yeah. shocked us. Um, and they just, it's not like they're all tappings either. You know, he, he somehow found the net from, you know, ridiculous angles out of absolutely nothing. And if you look at, you know, if you're into your XG and, and whatnot, he's got 15 goals from 5.9 XG, which is phenomenal. So yeah. for me as well, I think that individual performance at Molyneux sort of just, you know, made my mind up on going with KDB as well. Well, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm, I'll tend to agree with you. I think Kevin De Bruyne is a, he's a phenomenon, isn't he? Let's be fair. Um, Salah, for me, first half of the season was unplayable. He, you know, I think he was the best player in the world. And then all of a sudden, he's got, I think he got an injury and he just, he seemed to have just dropped off. You don't, you know, every week it was like Salah's doing this and Salah's doing that. Now, you don't hear much of him. And, he, you know, the, but the good thing about Liverpool is they've got players that, um, you know, can step into his position. If one drops off, another one steps up. And that's, you know, you've got Yota, you've got, um, what's the new guy's name? I forget his name. Diaz. Uh, Diaz, yeah. And you've yeah. had Marley. So they all sort of rotate. Um, so it hasn't been so much on Salah. I, I, I do agree with Kevin De Bruyne, but I've got to say a special mention um, for another Man City player who I think is magnificent, and that's Bernardo Silva. 
because I think he has been absolutely class this season. And they nearly sold him, I think it was last season or the season before. He, was, he didn't seem like he was quite working out. But I think Bernardo Silva is a player and a half. Like, and to, to lose a David Silva and then replace him with someone like Bernardo Silva, I mean, it's, mm. it's one silver for another, isn't it? He's, he's turning into that sort of mould of player. I really like him. Um, but I've got to say another special mention to another player who started off the season awfully. That's Harry Kane. The way he's playing at the moment, you know, don't don't rule him out of this of this voting because, you know, he could quite easily win it. You know, he's magnificent every season. But this season, under Conte, him and Son, are, 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 I think they're reaching different levels. But I do think KDB, um, for me, is, is the player of the season. But a special mention to them to Silver and Kane, because I think they've been phenomenal. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned Kane there, Nicky, because he seems to start slow every single season, doesn't it? But his quality is is for me is the best striker in the world alongside Lewandowski. Oh, I I don't. There's no there's no debate there. No, I, I think by far, I, it's it's not just the, like his goal scoring record either. He's a phenomenal goal scorer, um, but when he drops into that sort of midfield area to pick up the ball and feed in Sun, yeah, he's he's a phenomenal passer of the ball. You know, yeah. I, I could even see him later on in his career when his legs have gone a little bit, when he can't quite make the box, <clears> dropping <throat> into Mike midfield like a Joe Linton role because he could quite easily do that. Just spray the like his passing ability is phenomenal, and like yeah. it takes a you know it takes a special. They had another striker like that um, Tottenham Teddy Sheringham used to drop uh, drop into that midfield role um, and then spray the ball around and, and, and was technically good with the ball. And I think he's better than than Teddy, and Teddy was a good player. So, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah phenomenal, player, phenomenal. Yeah, I think you're right there. I think Harry Kane's passing is very underrated. And that brings us on to who do you think is the most underrated player of the season and an honourable mention? So who do you think is the most underrated player? I, I know Nicky's mentioned him, but I was going to say Son because he's, hmm. if you asked 100 football fans, I don't think maybe one or two would give you Son as the answer. If you ask 100 football fans who they think was going to be the player of the season, I don't think many of them would mention him. You look at his numbers, if he has a decent game on the final day of the season, he could finish with the golden boot this year. He's only one goal behind Salah. Um, no they're disrespect to Norwich. Norwich. Say it again, sorry. And they're playing Norwich. Yeah, exactly. So no disrespect to Norwich. I think, you know, it's a, you know, a winnable game as well. So he's got 21 goals, seven assists in his 34 games. None of those are from penalties as well. Salah, I think, has got five goals from penalties this season. So he's, you know, his goal conversion rate's been phenomenal. And Spurs hadn't had the best of seasons. And obviously, Conte's come and turned things around, got them firing again. So I know Spurs come close every year, but this se from next season, they could be a real force. Add one or two decent players, and under Conte, they're going to be a serious force. But I think Hyungman Son for sure is, is definitely an honourable mention for me. No, I, I tend to agree with with Son. I, I think Son's been a, a very underrated player for for many years. I've, I've really, I think Son's world class. I really do. Um, yeah. But just a bit of biasness from my, me. I think um, I'm, I'm not sure how other fans are perceiving him. But Jared Bowen this season has been unreal. I mean, unbelievable. I, I, in in fact, like I can't, I still can't believe he ain't got an England cap yet. You know, there's, yeah. there, I'm, you know, let's talk about a West Ham in going to Qatar. Um, no, like, unfortunately, it's not in the summer. He's got to start the season next season. But in terms of stepping up to you know to, to that level, he's he's gone a level above this season. Like he's been absolutely phenomenal. His goal scoring is getting better, um, and I can only see him getting better. He's at a prime age, um, but there's not been a lot of talk about. Jared Bowen from other fans. Not that I've heard anyway. I might be completely wrong there. But... Yeah, you say that, but I, I completely agree. I have I have two down, Jared Bowen. And we've we've got some couple of internationals coming up, haven't we? The Nations League. I think England are playing in the Nations League. I, I'd yeah. I'd be shocked if he's not if he's not in the squad. I'd be very shocked. I think get him in the squad now, see if he gets on in these nation leagues games, and then bet him in some more internationals after, after the season and hopefully get him in the England squad for, for Qatar. Because even if he's not starting, it'll be a brilliant asset to come off the bench against yeah. anybody. Yeah. So he, he was one of mine. Another one I'm going to go with. I'm going to go to a sort of like a similar thought process as you, Dave. But I'm going with Christian Eriksen because he's come in in January. Obviously, a lot mm. of talk about will he be able to. Obviously, uh, Inter didn't want him playing with the thing in his heart or some rules in Syria or something like that. 
Um, and he's come in and he's he's turned Brentford into a very, very, very good side, I think. We played them down there. We played them at the turf early in the season. We battered them. I was like, how are these doing so well? But then they dropped off really badly and had a very poor sort of like mid-season. Then he come in. They've been class ever since. He's he's their KDB. He, he, everything they do goes through him. He's been getting goals, assists. He's been phenomenal. And I, I believe if he didn't come in, they would have be, at least been in the relegation picture a lot more. They, they're well out of it now, obviously. Not, we know they can't go down now. And pretty much since... Six weeks ago, they've been pretty much relatively safe. So, for me, uh, Christian Eriksen's gonna gonna be the main one. Obviously, honourable mention for Bowen, and another honourable mention because it's the only time I'm probably gonna get a Burnley player in, uh, and in the end of the season awards with, with the season that we've had. So, I'm gonna mention Nathan Collins. He's a brilliant defender. To say he's had to wait his turn because Tarkovsky and Ben Mee are there. Uh, obviously, they've got a couple of injuries now, so he's been playing. He's an absolute Rolls Royce. Uh, he will play, in my opinion, for a Premier League top eight side, maybe, maybe even top six. He's class. He will be a, a very good international for Ireland over the next 10, 15 years. Remember his name because he is going to be a very, very, very good defender. I was I was going to mention as well somebody that, again, is so pivotal to his team, Jamie Vardy. Now, I'm not saying he should be in the player of the season shout, but obviously he's, he's had an injury. Leicester have struggled. But this season, he's got 14 goals in 18 starts. This is mm. a 35-year-old, you know, striker who's still physically fantastic. Um, but he's been, you know, for, for Leicester, when he's been available, he's been phenomenal. And again, I think he's been a, a big reason why they've not so much struggled, but they haven't probably been as good as they have been over the last few years. And you can see now he's come back and their form has sort of shot up again. And they could still finish in the top eight. Um, if they finish strongly this season. So I think he's been a, a big miss for Leicester, but when he's been called upon, been fantastic. Hey, he needs to earn that money, mate, because he could be paying out a lot of money for his wife. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, he's been he's been sort of distracted with, with other things at the minute as well. <laughs> now, we, we've, we've sort of talked about our positives and obviously the best players and you know our, our honourable mentions, but... Let's talk about biggest disappointments from our clubs or maybe players, you know, that we really expected a lot from this season in the Premier League. Who do you, who do you boys think? Oh, I mean, obvious one is Lukaku. Mm. That's the obvious one. But I know um, Joe was going to talk about him. So I'll, I think the biggest disappointment right now is Arsenal. Yeah. The whole, the whole of the art, like as, the a, as a club, in, yeah. Uh, the position they was in, and, and listen, and Man United as well. You know, uh, no, I, actually, I'm going to go for a player for Man United. Biggest disappointment for me, who I was really looking forward to seeing in the Premier League this year, and hasn't hasn't done it at all, is Varane. I thought Varane's a magnificent player. Um, Real Madrid and all of that sort of thing, you know, he's a FIFA legend. If you get him on FIFA, you you know, you're blessed. Um, but he's coming to Manchester United this year and he just, look, I know that the club's a mess. The whole club's a mess, you know. They've tried to shuffle it around and, you know, he's playing alongside Harry Maguire, which isn't going to give him, uh, you know, a whole, whole lot of confidence. When he has played, that is. Um, but he's disappointed me, you know. He's, he's too easy to get at. Doesn't seem like you can quite cut it in the Premier League with these, you know, these big bustling centre forwards or these quick centre forwards. And he's, he, he, yeah, that that's he really has disappointed me because I was really looking forward to seeing him have a good season. But there you go. Yeah, for me, I'm going Sancho. I thought you were going to steal man then, Nicky, when you said Man United. Really looking forward to seeing him in the Premier League. I'm like, he's going to say Sancho. No, but no, for me, it's Jaden Sancho. Again, another one did very well in the Bundesliga. I was very excited to see him come in. I think he had eight goals and 11 assists, uh, 11 assists last year in the Bundesliga. You know, it's a very, very good season. People say the Bundesliga isn't as, as competitive in the Premier League. And yes, I agree, but it's still a very, you know, some very good numbers. But to come in and only have three goals and three assists, I think one of them goals did against Burnley, one of them assisted against Burnley. So it's technically only two goals and two assists because, you know, practically rolled over for him and, um, uh, at Old Trafford. So... Yeah, for me, it's Jaden Sancho. And he came in for a lot of money as well. I can't remember what it was off the top of my head, but he came in for a lot of money as well. Um, it and it's just been disappointing. Yeah, he's, he's, he's just been disappointing for me. And I am very disappointed to see. I, I do think he'll get better. Um, I think he's a similar sort of ilk to Grealish in the sense that he's come in for a lot of money and he's not done as much as what people would have expected him to do. And I think he will have a better second season, the same as Jack Grealish at Man City. Um, but I, I'm expecting him to get better. But this season, big disappointment for me. He was disappointing. He was disappointing. Do you know? But you know what put me off of saying Jaden Sancho? They spoke about him for so long at, at Man United. I forgot he joined this year. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're after him for a while, weren't they? Yeah, the transfer saga went on for about four years, and I forgot he actually signed this year, so... Yeah, I'm, I know. Obviously, you've mentioned Lukaku. I think that was that was the obvious one for me. He came in from Inter, had a great, great year um, in Italy last season, and he's come in. And I, I don't know. I think it's behind the scenes issues. You know, we had that interview. Uh, I think it was was with Sky, and he sort of slated Tuchel and his setup and so on. I don't think that's done him many favors, but he's come on a little bit the last few weeks. I think he's got eight goals this season, but it's his, his performances aren't anywhere near you know the level they were at. So yeah, the, the 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 sort of contrast in his performances from you know last season to this season has been have been really poor, really. So I'll be interested to see how he was getting on. I think if the sort of Harry Kane to City saga was this summer rather than last summer, I think Conte would have been interested in maybe taking Lukaku to Spurs with them mm. working so well together previously. But on the flip side of that, looking at my team. And I know a lot of you guys probably agree. He's Raul Jimenez as well. Obviously, had such a nasty injury last year, and we would we could not, you know, score a goal last year. We were so poor. We had to rely on Fabio Silva, who obviously wasn't ready. We brought in William Jose from Spain again. wasn't wasn't good enough. And we're excited to see Jimenez back, but I don't know what it is. His performances just haven't been up to it. He's still got a, a, himself a handful of goals. He's still our top scorer with six, but. There's a lot of fans now. If you again, if you asked a few Wolves fans, they probably wouldn't be against selling him in in the summer, which is a shame, really. Yeah, yeah fair enough. I just want to quickly as well. Now we're doing his own clubs, or, or you've mentioned your own club as well. I want to quickly just just say Veghorst because he came in in January with you know a lot of promise. He's another one did well in the Bundesliga. I think over the last three years, the only person who scored more goals than him in the Bundesliga is Lewandowski, and he's come in. And he, I don't necessarily think it's his fault. I think it's it's he's come into a Burnley style of play that doesn't necessarily suit him. We're so used to pumping the ball up to Chris Wood, who wins headers, flicks him on. Whereas Veghorst, for a guy who's six foot six, he doesn't win many headers. So we're pumping the ball up to him, and he's got this weird jumping style. He kind of gets shorter as he jumps because he brings his head in and jumps, so he becomes like five foot ten when he jumps. There's been a few glimpses where you can see how good he can be when you know when we play to his strengths, Brighton away, you know, Man United at home. Um, but for me, he's coming, and he was supposed to be, you know, the the, the not the savior, but. We, we haven't scored enough goals this season. He didn't score enough goals this season with Chris Wood up top. So that it was a case of, all right, Newcastle, you can have him if you want. Fair enough. But then we'll bring in Veghorst and he'll score some goals because Chris Wood didn't and Veghorst hasn't either. So, yeah, that's been a disappointment for us. Yeah. I, I, I mean, if we're going to go our own clubs, I think one the, the, the obvious one for West Ham is Nikola Vlasic, who's paid a lot of money for him and he, he, he's barely played. And Crow as well. He's 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 not played at all. I, I don't know what he's been doing there. To be quite honest with you, it's just it's like we give him a season ticket. But um, let's go a little bit more positive. Um, who has been the shining light? And it doesn't necessarily have to be your club, uh, but you know, maybe give us an answer from your club and you know what you've seen elsewhere. But who has been your shining light this season? I'm gonna say for for Wolves, it's got to be Jose Sar. Um, obviously, we we'd had Rui Patricio for a number of seasons, Portugal number one, and when he was linked with a move away, a lot of Wolves fans were worried because we were replacing him with somebody that couldn't even get in the Portugal squad. Um, but he has come in and and he has been phenomenal. Um, I'm not gonna say it's an, a perfect season because there have been one or two errors or a couple of times where he's given away penalties, but. In terms of you know saves, he's got the best save percentage uh, percentage out of any goalkeeper in the Premier League this season. If you're into your nerdy stuff in terms of you know goals prevented, he's prevented nine goals this season, which is the closest rival to that is Allison with two. It's such a massive difference, and I think it's probably mm. one of the highest ever uh, goals prevented stats since Opta started ta- you know looking into that sort of stuff. So for the amount we paid under seven million pounds. An absolute steal. And you know what? If, if a couple of pundits started putting him into their team of the season, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be against it. I'm sure they'll get other Premier League fans moaning, but I think he's got every right to be up there with with some of those shouts. Mm. Yeah, fair enough. I think for me, from our club, I've already mentioned him. It's, it's Nathan Collins. I kind of mm. went went early with that one. Um, but yeah, like I said, he's had to be patient. He's been patient. And we've kind of had our fingers burnt a bit with this before because we brought in Ben Gibson a few years ago for what was then a club record fee of, I think it was 15 million quid. Uh, and he was on the bench behind Ben, me and Tarke, and he didn't like it. He kicked off. He ended up going back to Middlesbrough for training while on the contract with Burnley. Then he went on loan to Norwich, who got promoted. And then it was just a big mess. Um, so to do it again... 
and actually bring someone in, someone in with the correct attitude who is happy to sit there and work um, and learn, sorry, and not play, and then then and then do well when he gets his chance. Yeah, for me, it, it's definitely Nathan Collins uh, in a burnish shirt. He's been our shining light. There's not been many this season. Corne in the earlier start of the season, he was fantastic. Second half of the season, um, he's not been too good. But just to go on a on a wider thing and and go to another club, I, I've, I've I've mentioned Jacob Ramsey on 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 this show before. I'm going to do it again. I'm a big fan of him. He's so young. I think he, he's another one who's going to have a big future. You know, he's, he's going to be a very, very, very good footballer. He, he can end up making the move from Villa to City again in a, in a few years, like Grealish did or, or, or Liverpool. Um, he, he is going to be one of the one of the better footballers in this country. I think he's fantastic. Um, Charlie, like for, for my club this season, I've got I've, I've got two actually. I've got the Europa League. Um, journey that we had all the way to the semi-finals I'm, as, we, as we're speaking there it is the night of the final um, I should be in Seville but I'm not I'm here talking to you guys but <laughs> apart from you know the disappointment in the last game magnificent journey especially from where we came from a couple of seasons ago you know to qualify last year was fantastic this year to compete um, back to where to, you know compete and still compete for that sixth place and to get to the semi-final the European uh, tournament it, it's been fantastic but I've got to say um, apart from the obvious Bowens and, and, and Declan Rice's, player-wise for me for West Ham has been Craig Dawson. Craig Dawson has been phenomenal this year. And, you know, I famously done a video when we signed him because we was meant to be going for Tukovsky at the time. And, um, you know, I, I, we really wanted Tukovsky at West Ham. Um, and it was like 30 million, but, you know, he didn't want to move. And they've gone out and they've, they've, they've loaned Craig Dawson from Watford. And, and I'm going to be totally honest, when I watched Craig Dawson for Watford, he was one of the worst defenders I, I think I've ever seen. And I said to him, what, what are we bringing him in for? He's never going to play for us. Blah, blah, blah. One of the worst players I've ever seen. Cheap option again. And I'm telling you now, he could have won our player of the year. He was that good. He was, you know, important goals as well. He's just one of them old-fashioned, um, you know, old-fashioned centre-halves that you you know, they, they're a dying breed. We had um, yeah. James Collins um, play for us, who, who was who was in that in that, and we love we love them sort of defenders. And he just he's just one of them guys that you know don't only pop up with the odd important goal, but will chuck his body in front of everything. So I've got to say Dawson for a special mention. Um, but in terms of you know the rest of the league, I think the biggest shining light, and it, it should be everyone's top of their list, is Mike Dean is retiring at the end of this season. <laughs> And it's the last I ever want to see that geezer, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> if only Kevin Friend is retiring as well with him. Yeah. After that there. decision at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium on Sunday. But like I said, we won't get too much into Burnley. I'm trying to trying to focus on other things at the minute. Um, so let's look at the title race. Of course, the title race is going down to the wire. Uh, I want to know, though, who you think is the best side in Premier League history. Oh... See, I'm 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 a bit younger than you guys, so I probably don't, don't quite remember the yeah, the classic <laughs> sort of early two thousands, late nineties teams. The the first one I remember though is obviously what well, vividly is Sir Alex's side when he had you know like Sir Ronaldo, Rooney, Tevez, and they were just like as a like a neutral at the time, they were just so good to watch. I, I'm a big fan of Ronaldo still, and you know, great to see him obviously back in the Premier League. But back then, when they were pushing for the Champions League titles, the Premier League title, they were just, just you know, everyone had their money on United to to win the league really around then. Mm. So for me, they were up there. They've got they had such a good team, so solid. Ferdinand and Vidic at the back as well. That was such a strong side. And I wish there was a way as football fans, and maybe in the future it would be a thing to see some of these modern day teams somehow be simulated against some some of these you know traditional sides i'd love to see some matches like that They're so good yeah I've, i have you know I've, I've watched the whole premier league and there's been some fantastic teams you know manchester united from really 92 through to about 99 were fantastic you know they culminated in the treble winning side i think uh, the, the two Sides that are battling at the top this, you know, this season and, and the past few seasons, the Liverpool Man City sides of, uh, you know, the modern side should, that, you know, they will be mentioned up there because they are phenomenal sides, both of them, and they go, you know, as good as they both are, they go toe to toe every season, and there's there's a point between them, and you know, every time um, it comes down to league, I think they are two phenomenal teams, but I don't know whether they're the greatest Premier League team ever, but the one I enjoyed watching the most. 
was the Arsenal invincible um, team. You know, a mixture of, of, of real talent, you know, Vieira in the midfield, Omri up front, Pires, Overmars, you know, um, Emmanuel Petit, Will Tord, you know, and people at the back like Loren and, you know, that, yeah, they was a phenomenal side to watch, you know. Um, I don't know whether they're the greatest because they didn't go on to achieve, you know, what the likes of Liverpool and, you know, Manchester United went on to achieve. Um, the Chelsea side have got to be, but to, for me to watch, I think they are the greatest team entertainment-wise to watch. Yeah, yeah, some good shouts there. It's we've all got different ones on this one, though, so it's good. So I, I'm I've always banged this drum, and for what Manchester United achieved in 1999, I, it's it's not been matched since. Teams have come close. Liverpool could beat it this year. I don't think they will, obviously, because I think City will win the league. But to win the FA Cup, the Premier League, and the Champions League in the same season, compete at the front of every single competition. Like the, the main three, anyway, and and to to achieve that, and it to still be, you know, the best that anyone's done in the league uh, in this league since is phenomenal. What they achieved, they had some fantastic players as well. Obviously, York and Cole up front, Schmeichel in the net, you know, they, they were brilliant. And even Solskjaer as well, coming off the bench, a super sub, the original super sub, they, they were fantastic. And and I was only around 11, 12 at the time, and I, I was in awe of watching them achieve that. And I was like, I, hopefully, Burnley will do that one day. Obviously, I didn't realise how difficult that would have been as a twelve year old, but. Um, to even be in the same league as them from what we were at that point uh, is is an achievement. But yeah, for me, the greatest Premier League side in history is Man United. What they achieved in 1999 what, it, it was fantastic. As impressive for Man United, that Man United team as well, is that a, a large core of their um, side were made up from academy yeah. players, all from yeah. the same academy team. You know, the class of 92, Geeks, yeah. Soles, Nev, the two Nevilles, Beckham. Beckham, but, yeah. Yeah, there were so many, like, in that side to achieve what they did achieve is, it is something special but yeah it will never be equaled like i said to do that with the kids as well it'll never be equaled and there's a, a culture these days of just throwing money at it uh, liverpool probably not as much as, as city but they're still you know big spenders uh, and that is the culture these days you don't see teams come sorry players come through the youth ranks as, as much as you, as you did then so yeah it, it'll never be matched what man united did in 1999 yeah, fantastic. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us for this edition, episode 15 of The Fan Zone. Um, if you're new around here, subscribe to the channel. Drop us a like. Leave your comments in the comment section down below. Tell us if we're talking nonsense. Tell us if you agree or don't agree. Uh, get involved. Uh, we love hearing your comments. Um, I've been Nicky Hawkins from my channel, West Ham Fan TV. If you want to plug your socials, boys. Yeah, so I'm Joe, Joe Redman from Turfcast Podcast. You can find us on, on YouTube's the main one, but also on Facebook, Twitter uh, and TikTok as well. Yeah, my name's Dave as a party from Talking Walls. Same as these guys on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, the work. So yeah, check us out. No worries. Thank you so much, lads. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and thank you so much for watching and join us next time. Cheers.